Hello everybody and welcome to this video. This is going to be kind of like a part two to my last video, which was my car tour, but you don't really need to watch them in order. So if you want to watch that one first, if you haven't seen it, you can pause this now and go watch it, or you could just watch it after. But I mentioned in that video that I was going to make an entire video all about the car buying process, my experiences, answering any questions you guys have, and that is this. So sit back, relax, grab a snack, grab a notepad, I don't know, and let's get started. What's up you guys, it's Hannah, welcome back to my channel. I put my hair in braids today so that hopefully I don't touch my hair as much because I tend to do that a lot. I just kind of like, I'm always touching it and I'm not really, it's so annoying. So I'm trying to do something about that. Hi, welcome to today's video. I am really excited to film this video right now because I love giving advice. I love just talking about like my experiences with stuff. I feel like this specific topic is something that I wish, how do I word this? I wish somebody would have told me the things that I am going to share with you today before I, you know, did this for the first time. So today, we're doing a big sister advice video slash tips slash sharing my experience about buying a car. What it's like being a first time buyer, things that I've learned and advice maybe that I want to share with you guys. It's exciting. It's so exciting. And it's also very intimidating and low key scary. I want to talk about this with you guys because one, I feel like it could be really helpful. This is stuff that I wish somebody would have told me and to maybe make you feel a little less intimidated and a little bit more prepared and confident about buying a car. So the other day I posted on my Instagram story, which if you do not follow me on Instagram, it'll be right here. It's at Hannah E. Maudi. I post stuff like this a lot, polls, questions. So if you guys want to participate in future videos, make sure to follow me on there. I posted this Instagram story the other day and I said ask me any questions you have about buying a car and a lot of them were similar so I've kind of picked out themes of the most asked questions so I'm going to share with you guys my background experience of car buying and then talk more in depth about the main questions that you guys had so before we get into anything I want to put a big fat disclaimer out there that I am not a financial advisor. I am not a professional. This is not professional advice that I'm giving you. I'm not saying that what worked for me or like the things that I like to keep in mind are going to work for you. This is all just my personal experience and personal opinions. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm not trying to professionally advise you. If you want a legitimate professional opinion on something like this, go to a financial advisor. I am not that. I am a 21 year old college student who also happens to make YouTube videos. Okay, that's the perspective you're getting this from. All right, so I'm just gonna give a brief overview of my car buying experience, and then I will get more into detail talking about specific things like how to save for a car, financing the car with loans and stuff, credit, all of that kind of stuff. So my first car buying experience was about a year ago, summer of 2019. I was 20 years old when I bought my first car. I did not have a car of my own before that. My parents never bought me a car. The car that I drove in high school was my mom's. I would drive it to school because my mom worked from home, so she did not need it during the day. I went to a smaller dealership. I was connected to them through my dad's friends and got my car there. Got a used car, 2008 Honda Civic. If you remember, I made a video of like my first day with my car. Her name was Ariel and I loved her dearly. I, I love her dearly and the fact that I am parting with her hurts me. It really, I, and I know she She's just a car. It is not that deep, but she was my very first car and you know, I loved her. So as my down payment, I put down 20% of the car's price, what the dealer was charging. And then the rest of it was going to be on a loan that I would pay every month. I ended up paying off that loan like a month ago. And I'll talk more about that when I get into like all of the financing stuff. So that was pretty much that. Over the past year, my car has obviously deteriorated. It is an older car. It's 2008. I mean, obviously that's not like ancient or anything, but it is an older car. And that's just kind of what you get with a used car. You know, you never really know what's gonna happen. <laughs> so there were a lot of things that needed to be done. I knew that I was going to have to put money into that, obviously, if I wanted those things fixed. And at this point, I personally thought that it would be a better use of my money to put that money that I would have put towards fixing this older car that would have lasted for I don't even know how much longer or I could put that money towards getting a brand new car that I know that I will have and that will be reliable for a longer period of time. So a little less than a week ago, I purchased a 2020 Honda Civic. So I did end up getting a new car. I did not buy that outright. I put some money down and then I got a loan for the remainder, just like I did on my first car. The difference this time, a lot of differences. Number one, 
on this is a brand new car i'm still sitting here wondering how the fuck, i don't know i'm just very 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 happy and very grateful that i was able to do that i went to a pretty big and popular dealership i test drove and it was physically incredible it had so many features it drove so so smooth it was just everything that i wanted so i did end up getting that one all right so i think i'm going to go through the process of buying a car from the beginning of preparation and research all the way through like paying for it if you decide to pay in full or if you're paying a loan that stuff so i'm going to start at the very beginning i had a lot of questions about how to save money what kind of car should you get what are the things that you look for beginning off with probably the most important thing how to save for a car and this is really my answer for everybody no matter who you are what your job is what your source of income is you need to budget your money monthly i mean literally go to target or tj maxx or wherever and buy a little notebook get a cute one if that will motivate you whatever will motivate you to do this because it is very important maybe get some cute markers or colors or something i don't know but whatever will make you feel like you are motivated to be organized with your finances do it get a book get an estimate of how much you bring in a month and i would recommend that you make your estimate on the lower side so you're not like overestimating how much money you're bringing in because if you underestimate you can always bring in more but if you overestimate like you can't just grab that extra money out of thin air estimate how much you have to spend on necessary things bills groceries stuff like that and then see how much you have left over that will also determine how long it will take you obviously to save up the money for the car start looking around at cars getting a feel for different dealerships getting a feel for like what kind of car you want new used what year get information about financing loans interest rates get as much information as you can so that you can figure out how much you need to save to get that car what i've done both times is put a down payment down and then got a loan for the rest so if that's what you want to do which is a completely viable option because it is so important to build your credit and having a car loan is a significant source of credit when like a bank is looking at your credit score and your credit history if they see a car loan on there that's a big deal to them the amount that you need to put down as a down payment will vary some places don't have a minimum amount that you need to put down some dealerships do so you need to look into that as well if you're planning on putting a down payment down and then financing the rest the money that you need to have in cash when you're going to buy the car is what you are going to be accounting for when you are budgeting every month the number that i try to go off of in these situations like amount for a down payment is 20 percent of the cost of the car so when i'm saving that's the number that i want to get to is 20 percent of retail price of whatever the car is and in this situation it's better to overestimate than underestimate if you're not sure what kind of car you want at the time and you're trying to figure out how much you need to save for a down payment overestimating is better than underestimating in this situation because if you overestimate and you have more money than you need that's great you can just you know save the rest for something else but if you underestimate and then you need more money than you have you can't pull it out of thin air i had a couple questions about how to know if you're getting a good deal this is especially if you were buying a used car there is a website called kelly blue book go onto that website put in the information about the car that you are looking to buy it will tell you the range of what you should be paying it'll give you a fair market price it'll give you like the minimum and maximum of like what's fair for it always check kelly blue book to make sure that you are not getting gypped as far as knowing what kind of car you want it's really a personal preference i mean you can do your research if there's a specific aspect that you're looking for like if you 100 want a car that is good on gas mileage if that's what you want like you can search up cars with good gas mileage you know i don't know also talk to friends and family ask them about their cars and what they like about them and what they don't like and their experiences with specific cars just to kind of get an idea the reason that i chose honda i knew a lot of people that really liked hondas i was reading up on honda civics and overall they have pretty good gas mileage which was important to me because i did not want to be spending money on gas like every week like i wanted to get the most miles out of each tank of gas as i could so when i went to buy my new car i knew i wanted a honda so i ended up getting a civic again obviously a different model much newer i test drove it just like obviously to make sure you don't want to buy something you don't even know how it drives or like what the car feels like and i loved it i just wanted to stick with what i knew because i liked what i knew i knew that the newer cars had backup cameras which i really really wanted i wanted a specific color i wanted good gas mileage i wanted an automatic transmission obviously like a good sound system good speakers and stuff but when i actually got in the car it had so many more features 
that made me want to buy it even more that it, they weren't necessarily make it or break it for me but they were just added bonuses i feel like that's something else that's important when you are trying to figure out what exactly you want in a car make two columns like one column that is non-negotiables things that you have to have in your car for example i don't know if you live somewhere that's really cold one non-negotiable for you might be heated seats like you need heated seats so that could be in that but you might want something that can connect your phone through bluetooth i don't know it'd be nice if it had it but it wouldn't be a deal breaker if it didn't kind of write out a list of things that you must have and then things that you don't need necessarily but if they're there it would be nice like, you know so then when i actually like got into the car and got more information about the car it has apple carplay which i love on the steering wheel it has a button to pick up the phone a button to hang up the phone a button to call siri which i think is so convenient and also so much safer because if it's all right there you don't have to be distracted trying to do something when you can literally just press a button on your steering wheel call siri and ask her to do it for you so i was really happy about that it's not something that i went in there saying like oh i have to have apple carplay and i have to have these exact things on my steering wheel but when i saw that they had that and i tested it out like i really really liked it okay so then as far as like the process goes and kind of like what happens when you show up at the dealership this depends on what dealership you're going to because when i went to the smaller dealership for my first car i did not have to make an appointment i just showed up i looked around the lot and then if i saw one that i liked i could take it for a test drive the people at the dealership they told me that their cars were selling fast and that it may not be there in like a couple hours like somebody could literally come and buy it any minute if people were looking for this specific type of car it was very popular so i let that scare me and i was like oh my gosh like i need to act fast so i acted fast i put a down payment on that car we applied for a loan my dad and i together because i needed to have a co-signer because this was my very first car we had to wait a couple of days for the bank to process it and to get back to us one thing led to another we got approved for the loan but the dealership that i went to last week for my new car i had to make an appointment to test drive i'm assuming that if you just want to look you can just go and like walk around the lot but i knew i wanted to test drive so i made an appointment ahead of time i walked in the door told them i had an appointment a sales rep came out to me and that was the same person that was working with me the whole day the manager came out to me and said hi me my mom and the sales rep got in the car and test drove it and then brought it back and i decided that I wanted that car. So then we went over to another part of the dealership where we sat down and like started hashing out all of the financing stuff and the payment stuff and the insurance and all that i had filled out a finance application actually prior to me going to the appointment there was like a link on the website where you could do the finance application online so that when you get there you don't have to sit there and fill it out and then wait for them to process it so they already had my finance application in their system they just had to like run it check it and kind of give me a decision so i was approved for a loan without a cosigner which was like the single most like adulting thing that's ever happened to me in my life i went in to another office with a finance person and that is where we went through all of the options for loans if you're making the decision between just fully paying for it or putting a down payment and financing the rest through a loan it will make a positive impact on your credit if you do not pay it off right away and you instead just put a down payment down and then take out a loan and pay it off monthly consecutively for at least 12 months another person asked is credit important very and getting a loan for anything in life credit is very important because credit is literally the measure of how trustworthy you are in paying money back and you cannot prove your trustworthiness unless you have some type of credit history i started to build my credit when i was 18 years old when i turned 18 my mom and i went to the bank and she signed me up for a credit card i would just buy like small things on my credit card and then i would just pay it off every month just to kind of start building credit car loans mortgages stuff like that are very important and they will impact impact your credit a lot and that's what i've been told by every single finance person that i have talked to in regards to buying a car and you can go through whatever bank you want you can go through your own personal bank you could go through whatever bank the dealership partners with it is literally up to you if you want to shop around and contact different banks and see which one can get you the lowest interest rate you can do that i decided to just do it through the dealership and the bank that they partner with because the interest rate that i got was really good i was basically given a piece of paper and it had a chart where it was like your interest rate, the length of the loan in months, and then the monthly payment. So obviously, as you get to longer loan lengths, your monthly payment is lower because you're spreading it out over a longer period of time. The longest option that I was given was 72 months. So a six-year loan. My interest rate was the same for 
all of the different loan lengths. I don't know if that's typical. I was under the impression that as the length of the loan got longer, that the interest rate would be a little bit higher. And that's even what the person in the finance department said. They were like, that's typically what happens because when you're spreading it out that long, there's a higher risk that the person would default on the loan. So therefore the interest rate is higher. But my interest rate was the same for all the different loan lengths. So I ended up going with the 72 month loan because I had the same interest rate and it was the lowest monthly payment. And now I want to explain to you my process, my thought process when it comes to a car loan or just a loan in general. When I bought my first car, I put down a down payment. I tried to put down a 20% down payment. So 20% of whatever the cost of the car is, then I will take out a loan for the rest. What I was advised by the bank that I took the loan out through for my first car was to not pay the loan off. No matter if I have the ability to, do not pay it off until it has been 11 or 12 months. You want to establish a pattern of being able to pay your monthly payments on time every month because that is what will build your credit. This is what I did for that loan and this is what I will do for this loan. Every month I had like obviously a monthly payment that was required. Say that my payment every month is $200. I would write a check for that amount, $200, and that would fulfill my requirement for the month. At the same time, I wrote another check and say I wanted to allocate $400 a month to my loan. So 200 of it already went to the monthly payment. The other 200, I would write a separate check, make it out for $200 to the bank, and write principal only. What that means is that money does not go towards paying off any interest. Principal is just how much money you took out for the loan. Does not include the interest that will accrue. Say that the total that I needed to take a loan out for was $7,000. The principal of the loan when you first take it out is $7,000. Every month, it starts to accrue interest. So when you do your monthly payment, it goes towards the total of the loan, which is your principal and the interest that is accrued. If you write principal only, it will only go towards the principal part so that the next month, if your principal is lower, there's less to charge interest on. Does that make sense? Obviously, when you're taking out a loan, interest is inevitable, but you want to pay as little of it as is legal. That is my two cents on financing. In order to drive it off the lot, you have to have it fully basically paid for, whether you're paying it in full or if you're doing what I did and you put a down payment down, you have to have the loan secured and in place and approved and everything before you can drive it off the lot because until you do that, it is still the property of the car dealership. So once you have that in place, you also have to make sure that you have insurance. We had to call the insurance company at the dealership, put that vehicle on the insurance. They basically sent us back a confirmation that that vehicle was insured on this insurance policy. You had to give that to the car dealership just so they had proof of insurance because you can't drive a car without it being insured. So by the time we left, we had a loan in place, car was insured, we were good to go and I could take the car home. I think I'm gonna end on that because I've been talking for a really long time. So I hope that something that I said in this video was helpful. And if you have any further questions about the car buying process or anything that I talked about, feel free to leave them down below in the comments and I will try to respond to as many of them as I can. So that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys liked this video. Thank you for watching. I hope it was helpful. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you've stayed until this point in the video, comment down below, I'm a real one because you're a real one. If you wanna see more videos from me, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I post a new video every single Sunday. And if you forget that I post a new video every single Sunday, or if you just want to get notified exactly when I post a new video, then turn on my post notifications for my channel, the little bell icon, so that you can get notified exactly when I post a new video. And yeah, I think that's it. I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. <laughs>